Hello, and welcome to Siteman Cancer Center at Barnes Jewish Hospital and Washington University School of Medicine. You are about to take an important step in your patient journey, and you probably have more questions than you can remember to ask. What is the process of stem cell transplant? How will I feel? While watching this video, write down any questions that come to mind so we can answer them during your next appointment. We also recommend that you watch this with family members or other caregivers so they learn more about the process too. By the end of this video, we hope to answer most of your questions. Also, we'd like to show you around Siteman Cancer Center so things are more familiar when you arrive. We are located on the Washington University Medical Campus in the Central West End neighborhood of St. Louis. Our inpatient facility, Parkview Tower, overlooks Forest Park, considered one of the best parks in the nation. We designed the facility around the patient experience to provide the most supportive environment possible. Siteman Cancer Center is a part of Barnes Jewish Hospital and Washington University School of Medicine, both nationally ranked institutions. And our physicians also are researchers and medical school faculty members. Many of our patients form close bonds with their care providers, including nurses, while at Siteman Cancer Center. Now, we'd like to introduce you to some of the team, the people who will be taking care of you. We are among the largest marrow and stem cell transplant programs in the world, performing on average nearly 400 transplants a year. Our program provides the best cancer treatments available, both investigational and as standard of care, helping to ensure the best possible outcomes for our patients. Our commitment to world-class research and compassionate patient care provide a winning combination in the fight against cancer. Stem cell transplant, bone marrow transplant, and blood and marrow transplant are phrases that can be used interchangeably, which can be confusing for patients. For this video, we'll use the term stem cell transplant. There are two different types of transplants, autologous and allogeneic. In an autologous transplant, you are your own donor. Your own stem cells are collected and stored for reinfusion later. Diseases typically treated with autologous stem cell transplant are lymphoma, multiple myeloma, and some solid tumors such as testicular cancer. In an allogeneic transplant, you receive someone else's stem cells. The donor can be a relative or an unrelated donor. Allogeneic transplants are typically used to treat leukemias, myelodysplastic syndrome, and aplastic anemia. All inpatient cancer services, including stem cell transplants, are provided at Barnes Jewish Hospital in Parkview Tower, a state-of-the-art facility with an attached parking garage on the north side of the hospital campus. A family lounge and scenic respite areas are available to guests of patients. A patient and guest relations department can assist with travel and transportation arrangements, lodging, activities, and interpreter services. Parkview Tower has three floors called units dedicated to stem cell transplant patients. They are the 8800, 9800, and 10800 units, each with 32 beds. The units are designed to make the stay as comfortable as possible for patients and families. Each of the 96 private rooms is equipped with a HEPA filtration system and state-of-the-art monitoring equipment. Transplant units also are designed to minimize the risk of infections, a major concern for patients undergoing stem cell transplants. Patients at Siteman Cancer Center also benefit from the expertise of Washington University researchers who are recognized around the globe for improving stem cell transplants. The program receives a large amount of research funding each year. At Siteman, we have several financial coordinators to help you through this process. Our goal as financial coordinators is to ensure we provide accurate financial information to our patients and their families in a compassionate and tactful manner. Here at Siteman, we are huge patient advocates. We work cooperatively with all members of our transplant team to ensure the best possible outcomes for our patients. As stem cell transplant financial coordinators, we make ourselves available to our patients who have any questions concerning their health insurance and how it relates to their transplant experience. If there are insurance disparities or lack of insurance, our financial coordinators work closely with our Siteman financial counselors who can assist with financial assistance for qualified individuals. 
Our financial coordinators are continuously educating themselves on the latest insurance plans and coverage in order to educate and assist our patients with confidence. From the moment of a patient's initial consult to the moment the patient is admitted for transplant, we are working hard to ease the stress of financial concern. We are here to help and guide you through this process. Transplant coordinators are experienced stem cell transplant nurses who practice in the outpatient setting. We work with you and your physicians to make sure your needs are met and that there is ongoing coordinated care during each phase of treatment in the stem cell transplant process. You will be assigned an outpatient nursing team during your first office visit. They will follow you through the transplant process and be your primary contact when you are not in the hospital. The outpatient nursing team will provide orientation, education, assessment of your condition, and supportive care. We realize getting a stem cell transplant is a difficult decision, but once you've made the decision, please realize that we'll be with you every step of the way. Seidman Cancer Center is one of the top stem cell transplant centers in the nation. And our goal is to get you through the tough times and back to your normal life as quickly as possible. The auto transplant process begins by mobilizing your stem cells in your bone marrow and moving them into your bloodstream for easier collection. Your stem cells will be mobilized by using a series of growth factor protein injections. Phoresis is a non-surgical procedure in order to collect blood. Prior to phoresis, you will have a central line catheter placed in interventional radiology. The catheter will be placed in your chest under your collarbone under a light sedation. During phoresis, the tubing from that catheter will be connected to the phoresis machine, which is also called the cell separator. The machine will pull off your blood. It will separate and spin it and collect the stem cells and return the rest of your blood back into that central line catheter. Phoresis takes up to three to six hours each day that it is needed, up to four to five days or until enough stem cells are collected. Phoresis is typically a harmless process. However, you might experience some chills, fever, lowering of your blood count, and maybe some numbness and tingling around your mouth. You will be closely monitored, but make sure you're communicating any symptoms you're having so they can treat you accordingly. The preparative regimen is the first part of the transplant process. The treatment will begin on check-in and will last up to five days. Uh, the preparative regimen is given in order to kill off any cancer cells that may be in your body and to make room for the new cells that we will infuse. Side effects during the preparative regimen um, include GI upset, such as nausea and vomiting. You may also have fluid retention, which is related to the infusions that we have to give to help flush out the chemotherapy. It is very important to let your doctors and nurses know of any symptoms that you may be experiencing. For one, we have treatments and medications that may help alleviate some of your discomfort, um, but also any small symptom may be a sign of a bigger problem. So the more that you tell your transplant team, the better your um, team can take care of you. Most patients tolerate the first week of therapy very well. You should be able to remain very active, which we encourage, and you should also keep a positive attitude during this time. After your preparative regimen, you may have a day or two of rest prior to the infusion of your stem cells. For the purpose of counting days, the days of your preparative regimen are negative days, and the days that your stem cells are infused is called day zero. The nurse will come to your room for your transplant on day zero with your stem cells. You'll be hooked to a monitor to monitor your vital signs. The doctor will be present. Your stem cells will be cryopreserved in a preservative. The stem cells will be infused through your central line. Uh, you could have a reaction. You may have a slight tickle in your throat. They will have medications to help you with this. Once the stem cells are infused, the procedure is over. You will continue to be monitored in the hospital for any side effects and then the stem cells start to travel throughout your body and it takes 10 to 14 days for them to start to grow and uh, become mature bone marrow cells. During the infusion process, you could notice a tickle in your throat, you could have some shortness of breath, you could have some low oxygen levels and the nurses and the doctor 
will all have medications and everything needed at the bedside to take care of those things. You may experience nausea, vomiting. You receive a lot of fluid with your transplant. You may experience swelling. All of these will be managed by the team. Uh, you will also, your blood counts will be low and you will need um, blood and platelet transfusions throughout your stay. And uh, those will be managed as well. We have a chaplain services, we have a social work that can give you any kind of references or contacts that you need. We have registered dietitians for each floor that can talk to you about special questions that you might have about diet and how to move forward. If you don't speak English, we do encourage you to have a family member. However, for any medical issues or medical conversations that need to take place, we'll have a professional translator there to do that with you. She'll be on eight, nine, or 10 for the autologous transplant. Each floor has an exercise room. It has exercise stationary bike. We encourage walking, even walking outside of your room with a mask. You'll have a map of the floor that defines how much is a mile. We have people that can walk with you if they need to. Physical therapy can give you exercises you could do in bed if you can't walk. All floors have a shared refrigerator that you could use for snacks. You can keep snacks in your rooms. On the second floor, we have a lounge that family members can use. It's got several washers and dryers. It's got a shower. It's a place where they can go maybe if the patient is having a sleep day instead of trying to sit in the room and be real quiet. They could go down to the second floor. There is a concierge person there, and it gives them a lot of options. We do ask that they shower down there. They do supply towels and washcloths. We also have computers available to stay in touch. They can be checked out by the day. So you can ask your nurses for how to contact and check out a computer. Because it's such a huge time in people's life and it's because things come up that have never come up before, Siteman has an oncology psychology department that is more than willing to meet with any of our patients and is open also, I think, to speak with patients' families. You can let your nurse know, you can get the phone number from anyone, you can call them directly or we can call the referral down for you if you prefer. They'll stay in touch a lot of times even after your discharge from your transplant if you need to touch base with them when you're here for an appointment. For autologous transplants, it's generally, if we use day zero as the day that you get your cells back, it's anywhere from day 12 up to day 20s. It's very individual. There's not a definite time that you can say, oh, you're in the hospital for this many weeks. You would need to have your blood counts recovered to a certain point. Absolute neutrophil counts is what we follow. The nurse can calculate those for you. It's not a defined lab value. You'll have to have no fevers for at least 24 to 48 hours. You'll have to be drinking um, at least a liter a day and eating small amounts without having to constantly take something for nausea. Walking is obviously something you wanna be doing as well. Nutrition is such a big thing and there's so many things out on the internet. We tend to do evidence-based practice here. Our registered dietitians are college educated and very adept at what oncology patients need to heal, the types of things they need. Um, if you would like to see a dietitian, they do try to meet with all of our transplant patients. If you wanna see one at any time after or before that, you can let us know. We'll have the dietitian come in and see you during their course of their day. The chemotherapy and radiation will have effects on reproduction as well as sexual function. Um, it is safe to have intercourse with your partner when you feel ready for that. Um, we do wanna be notified if you have any concerns or questions because there could be some risk for infection or bleeding. If you have concerns about reproduction, um, just let us know and we can talk about options such as IVF or in vitro fertilization or sperm banking and provide a referral for you to the fertility department. After your hospital discharge, you will follow up within three days. If you didn't get your central line removed in the hospital, that will also be scheduled to be removed. You will continue follow-ups every week or two, depending on how well you're doing and until your blood counts recover to a safe range. 
Due to advancements in cancer care, patients are living longer. We understand that post-transplant, you may have many different challenges, including functional, medical, and psychological challenges. For this reason, we have implemented a survivorship care program. This is integrated into your routine follow-up. The goal of the survivorship care program is to improve the experience and outcomes for stem cell transplant patients and their caregivers by providing high quality clinical survivorship care. Whether you're an autologous transplant recipient or an allogeneic recipient, we recommend that you have a caregiver. The caregiver is not someone who's going to be doing your bathing or your actual physical care. Generally, there's someone that help you. You have a, a fog frequently, uh, trouble focusing, so they can help if you have a lot of medications. They can fill up medicine boxes for you. They can attend doctor's appointments with you to make sure that both of you are hearing the doctor saying the same thing. You can't drive in the initial period. When that period ends is up to you and your outpatient doctor. A caregiver can be anyone that a patient identifies that is a reliable person in their life that can make a commitment to be there for the patient that understands the needs that the patient has. Uh, as mentioned, the appointments, doctor visits, medications, and those things. Seidman Cancer Center provides support for caregivers. Uh, we understand that this can be a very big task for caregivers and it can be very stressful. You know, they have a lot of stuff going on in their own lives. Um, we understand that they want to help their family or loved one, um, but they may need additional resources themselves. For all those reasons, a caretaker is needed, available to motivate you, to remind you to have a little something to eat or bring it to your side every two hours. Thank you for taking the time to learn more about the stem cell transplant program at Seidman Cancer Center. We hope this video has made you more familiar and comfortable with the journey you're about to undergo. We're grateful that you've placed your trust in Seidman Cancer Center in your battle against cancer. We understand that things may be frightening and unpredictable for a while. Our goal here at Seidman is to help you get through your treatment and back to your life as soon as possible. You're not alone and we're here to help. Thank you so much for choosing us as your transplant center. Thank you for allowing us to provide you with the exceptional care that you deserve. Thank you for trusting Seitman Cancer Center with your care. Thank you. Thank you so much for choosing us to be your caregivers. It's an honor to be able to care for you during this time. Thank you for putting your trust in us. Thank you for putting your trust in us with your care. <laughs>